For well over half a century, he actively rode and traversed the political landscape of the biggest black nation on earth, like a colossus. For over 50 years, he raised the banner of peace, justice, unity and equity with forthright statesmanship, determination and resoluteness. For over 50 years, he pushed and defined the frontiers of selfless service and integrity with courage, candor, conviction, uncompromised character and principles, sometimes at great risks and to his personal discomfort. All these years, he left no one in doubt that the emancipation of the marginalized and deprived is a worthy and noble pursuit and therefore stood for and championed the cause of the downtrodden with a singular goal of uplifting their status. To cap it all, through these unbroken years, he had the audacity of unshaken belief in the Nigerian project. Baba Solomon Dashapla, who passed on on 9th of October 2013 at the fulfilled age of 80, will certainly stand tall in the roll call of those who can be counted in the making of Nigeria. Chief Solomon Dashaplar is no more. How do you pay tribute to a man who traversed a nation's political landscape for over half a century? How do you effectively capture the tremendous outpour of richly deserved eulogies from all strata of society, uplifted, mentored, inspired, touched and impacted by this man. A man who remained dogged and undaunted even when sent to jail based on circumstantial situation. How do you place an enigma who truly connected, interacted, engaged with and built bridges amongst a multitude of people across all interests who have so much to share and relate about him. Perhaps a humble option would be to sample a cross-section knowing fully well that this will just be but a mirror of the truly phenomenal sentiments surrounding a political colossus. Chief Solomon Dashablar, Wali Lantang, family man, teacher, lawyer, astute administrator, conscientious crusader and voice for all, consummate politician, resolute democrat, humble peace and bridge builder, statesman par excellence, forthright and exemplary leader, the emancipator. A truly great leader whose eventful and highly successful political career predated Nigeria's independence, having started his election as a councillor in Latan Native Authority in January 1959 and continued his election to the federal parliament in December 1959. Chiflar lived a long and most fulfilled life and his immense contributions to communal state and national development have assured him a place among the eternal heroes of the Nigerian nation. Chiflar will always be remembered for the exemplary humility, great vision, wisdom and maturity which he brought to political leadership in Nigeria for over 50 years as a legislator, executive governor, party leader and highly revered elder statesman. Chief Solomon Lair is a great national statesman. The whole country is mourning him. Solomon Lair is a great loss to this nation because we were governors together and he was a, a very competent person very dedicated and to every I mean in every respect it was a it was a good government. I personally would miss him very much. 
he was a very calm politician. He was very strategic. He was friendly. He was not easily shaken. He took everything in his place. I saw the daughter, the honorable member. And um, when she confirmed that the father died, I, I almost, almost collapsed. Because uh, he's such a team player. He was a man who believes in the politics of inclusion. When he believed in something, when he was alive, he stood by that until there is a spirit argument. All his policies were around how the people can be emancipated, raised to levels of fairness and justice. And so the major title that he loved, even more than that of governor, was that of emancipator. Solomon Lab stood for justice, he stood for peace, he stood for fair play. And it is his spirit of fair play that gave birth to a political emancipation program. Chief Solomon Lab lived and died for the people. The ability for him to stand up and create a platform that those who had no voice could express themselves, giving a voice to the voice is something that uh, would continue to be I know him for the ideas of trying to promote the concept of a minority being a powerful force in this country. What he said, he did. He has come fast for Nigerian unity. Taught me not to look at things of the world because I remember. When I told him that, Baba, houses, this, these people of these days, the ministers of Bozi, they are they're having houses when they leave office. Baba looked at me and said, and do my understand, I am the house. I don't need to build another house. It pains me a lot, but I've learned a lot from him that I will impact with so many lives. Because he took me as his own son, and uh, he has uh, guided me as I was growing up as a young man. He's a leader that uh, is worried of humiliation. I want to leave a legacy such as Chief Solomon when I get to his age. Baba has been a positive influence in my life. He has been a father, a grandfather, and loads more. He's always asked me what I want, and I've learned so much from him spiritually because I know him to be a God-fearing man, and most of the times, he stays up late at night till 2, 3, reading his Bible all by himself. And that has been a very big encouragement to me. Papa La, he was one who listens. He was one who has feelings. He doesn't have those airs. Waling Lantan was a light in Nigerian politics. So we wish to remember him as emancipator, a bridge builder, a philanthropist, a godly man, a man of peace, and a family man. We we'll miss him. For us in the North in particular, um, Chief Solomon La has been an elder statesman that has been a bridge builder between all communities. You know the roles that he has been playing. Uh, Baba had dreams. As a matter of fact, Baba was still dreaming that he had hoped to be the senior advocate of Nigeria. And uh, even as a two years ago, he believed that dream was achievable. He lived an exemplary life. He lived a life that of equity, of fairness. Highly he tribalized leader. He was the father of all of us. He was also a great reconciliator and worked greatly for 
the reconciliation and the unity of Nigeria and stood in between and, uh, and naturally he came from the Middle East, so he was a colossus standing between the North and the South, bringing all of us you know, together. Truly, cannot um, ignore the G18 letter that he delivered to General Abacha in his den. He dared Abacha. You cannot write the history of this country and its democracy without giving the first chapter to Chief Sobo. Never take offense. In what we are doing, even if it is against what he stood for. That has endeared him to virtually all of us who are even in the opposition. He was a patriot. Luckily, he documented his life in a book. And I recommend it to all of common politicians in this country. The most fitting tribute to this man. Is a model of peace and unity. Is a bridge builder. He was. He was a peacemaker, peace lover. Above all, he was a God-fearing man. I shared a lot of fond memories with my dad. Um, the first being, my dad taught me to believe in myself. We have to remind ourselves that if the boys around here say, Bakumi. How I wish God allow us to celebrate our beautiful birthday, uh, I mean, kind of coming together in January 30th. So that we beautiful years. So you can, as you say, imagine that our togetherness, I've never experienced. It is often said that it is not how long or short a man lives, but what he makes of his time on earth. Though Baba Lars' earthly surgeon is done, who he was is not gone. While the flame may have deemed, his indelible and exemplary legacies shine on. In this sense, his over 80 long years in this world were not in vain but would remain for generations an enduring gain. Solomon Dashaplar, 
the emancipator lives on.